Praise the Lord. You are still awake. I said, Praise the Lord. We're having a wonderful time together because we're, it's like we're in a factory and the Lord is molding us, the Lord is making us, and the Lord is developing us. And by the time we finish, the Lord is going to make a new man, a new woman out of you in Jesus' name. I like to see Jesus at work. And I like to see him take a dirty leper, an untouchable leper, and then he touches him, he cleanses him, and he becomes a new man. I like to see Jesus at work, and he takes a blind man, sitting on the side of the road, a nobody, a non-entity, a person that nobody reckons with, and then the Lord touches him. And then by the time you see him, people say he is. Other people say he is not. And then he said, yes, it's me. I was the person that was sitting by the roadside and I was begging. And I was saying, nobody, but the hand of the Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, taught me. And now I am somebody. And then they said, how did he do it? He said, he made clay, he put it on my eyes, and he told me to go and wash. And I went to go and wash, and lo and behold, now I can see. Once I was blind, but now I can see. That's what the Lord is doing in your life. The Lord is taking you, and the Lord is molding you, and the Lord is reshaping you. And by the time we finish, by the grace of God tomorrow, you will not be what you used to be. Something definite will have happened unto you. Rise up and pray along with me. And you tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I come. I want a change. I want a transformation in my life. I want you to touch me, Lord, so that I'll become a different man. I'll become a different woman. And I'll become a transformed person. Take hold of my life. Mold me. Rebuild me. And let there be a new change, a transformation in my life. Yes, that's what you will do. And the people that knew you before, when they see you, they will not be able to recognize you again because of the Lord working in your life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And say, Lord, touch me. Change me. Transform my life. Make a definite work of grace and a work of power in my life that I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we come to you at this time. We thank you, Lord, because we come right into your presence asking lord that you will touch every one of your people here today in jesus name turn our lives around make us great instruments in your hand that what we were we will not be again in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and everybody said Amen. Now you can sit down. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, we're looking at verse 19 again. Here Jesus Christ had started his ministry. And his ministry is a ministry of changing people. The ministry of transforming people. The ministry of turning lives around. And the ministry of taking fallen man lifting him up and making him a faithful man. It's the ministry of taking a dirty man, redirecting his life and making him a desirable man. It's the ministry of taking a weak man and changing his life, turning him around, making him a strong man. It's the ministry of taking a man that is a nobody and then making him somebody in the world, somebody in the kingdom of God. That's why he took all these fishermen that nobody knew before. They didn't know them beyond the shores of Galilee. 
They didn't know them beyond the places where they were fishing. And Jesus began to call them. And he said, you follow me. You follow me. And you follow me too. And when you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And those people responded. And they followed the Lord. And then you are seeing that he made them fishers of men. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. And he says unto them, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. In this particular message, what interests me are those two words, I will. I will. If you have been following the story of the revelation of God from the Old Testament Genesis, anytime God said, I will, hell may break loose. Men may trouble the community. And Satan may be agitated a lot. But once God draws those two words, I will, it will be done. I said, it will be done. And it's as far back as Genesis. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And you will see God has forgotten. You will see because the world went bad and went rotten that it will never be done. But when God pronounces those two words, I will, it will be done. And you remember when God called Moses and he said, I want to do something. And I'm raising you up, I'm getting you up out of where you are. You will go to the land of Egypt because I will deliver the children of Israel. Although Pharaoh said, who is that God that will be able to do that? But it was fulfilled. And when God said, I will, and eventually he brought Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, you begin to follow the words of Jesus Christ. And you are thinking, he said, I will, I will. I will. I'll make you fishers of men. And I like the story of Peter a lot. Because you can relate with Peter. And you can see what Peter was before Jesus got him. And then he got hold of him. And Jesus said, Peter, in your life, I will. And then eventually I look at this other side now. After God said, I will. And I see what Jesus did. And as I look at you this afternoon and i see the will of god in your life yes. and then in yourself you say but i am weak but jesus said i will you said but i have failed but jesus said i will and then you said but i am timid i am fearful but jesus said i will and then you said i have never performed any miracle but jesus said i will you are saying, Lord, I toiled all the night, I caught nothing. But Jesus said, I will. And then you are saying, people don't think I have any value. They don't think I can do anything. But Jesus said, I will. Those two words, I will, will take you away from where you are. Yeah. Will lift you up to the mountaintop. Yeah. And that is why there is a new value in your life. Yeah. There is a new price in your life. As I come to this session, my topic is... Christ's sevenfold I will. Christ's sevenfold I will. I want to find out what Jesus said when he said, I will, number one. I will, number two. I will, number three. I will, number four. I will, number five. I will, number six. I will, number seven, and then I collect all the seven statements together. I will, and I put it inside my heart. And then I'll be going. And anywhere I go, if anything challenges me, I pull out one of them, I look at it, I will. I put it back and say, there's no problem. There is no mountain. Because we're getting through, because Jesus said, I will. The sevenfold I will of Christ. Christ's sevenfold I will. Number one. It's in verse 19 of Matthew chapter 4. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That's the his will of transformation. His will of 
transformation. His will of transformation. I will make you fishers of men. I will take you away from where you are. And I'm transporting you and translating you into a new place, a new stage of mind that you'll be able to do what you were not able to do before. This I will is the will of Christ on transformation. What does that mean? Transformation from failure to success. From failure to success. Before Jesus met Peter and James and John and Andrew, they had failed. They were failures. But I want to tell you this afternoon, failure is taken away from your life. Yes. Not because you are different, but because Christ has come into your life. And he says, I will in your life. He will speak through you. He will walk through you. He will manifest himself through you because he said, I will make you fishers of men. It's the will of Christ on transformation. Number two, from cowardice to courage. From cowardice to courage. As I follow Peter around, I can identify with Peter a lot. You know, you know the way you are. You know the way I am. Whenever there's no trouble, whenever there's no challenge, and then you are telling the Lord what you will do. You say, I will climb the mountain. I will cross every sea. I will challenge anybody. If a Goliath comes before me, I will take him on. And eventually Goliath does not even come. It's a little child of an Amalek that came and he said, What did you say you will do? Do it now. Let us see. Ah, I didn't say it. Please, go your way and let me go my way. You become like a coward. You see, I cannot do it anymore. Or you, see, you know, you get to a new church. And when you get to that church, you know, somebody came to you and he said, uh, you are the new pastor. He says, welcome. And as he says, uh, welcome, he says, by the way, we are here. And then you don't understand when he says we are here. And then he begins to say, we are the people that control this place where the witches and the wizards are. You are the number five pastor that came. The first one came, when he did not bow to us, we ran him out. The second one came, and when he did not bow to our wish, we oppressed him, he ran away. The third one came, and the fourth one came, and we dealt with them. Welcome, we are still here for you. If you preach anything against witchcraft, evil spirit, we will show you. So preach anything you want to preach, don't touch this area. We are sitting down there. And then you, your feet will begin to knock one another. And then you say, what am I going to do? The Lord said, I will. I said, the Lord said, I will. And nobody can run you out of town anymore in Jesus' name. I, I went to visit some of my churches in one of the states. I won't tell you which state, so you don't put a negative uh, stigma on them. And the pastor called me. The pastor said, please, pastor. I, I'm glad you came. And I, was, I wasn't even going for a crusade. I was just going around, just visiting the churches. And then as I came to his church, he said, Pastor, I have difficulty. Anytime I stand on this pulpit, I cannot preach. It's like they take my voice. And then he said, you know, when I came, one of the people came to see me. And he said, eh, Pastor, you have come. We are here. And he didn't understand. And then he said that the fellow said, we are the people in control here. We are, you know, in this town. Anybody, whether politics or church or religion, that does not go along with us, he will not succeed. I said, what? I said, somebody told you. He said, yes. Then he said, another day, we well, were just going on the priest and this, we are going to have evangelism. And then somebody was coming behind us and was shouting, we are here, we are here. And he said, Pastor, I didn't tell church, but you are my leader, I will tell you. All my courage, everything went away. In fact, I was saying, why did uh, the GS transfer me to a place like this? What have I done? And he said, now you are here. I said, don't worry. I said, let's go into the church. And we got into the church. There's nobody in the church, only myself and him. And I stood at his pulpit where he normally preaches. I said, I declare freedom in this place. And then I went about, I went around the church building. And then I said, my brother, go and preach, you are free. And after I did that... He saw me a month after. He said, Pastor, I am free. Yeah. Pastor, I am free. Yeah. And this afternoon I come to declare to you, you are free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Actually, what happened after I've done that, after I left, 
one of those people, the very following service they were going to have, came into the church and fell down. And then began to confess and began to repent. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a wicked man. I'm a terrible sinner. And then the ushers came and carried her out. And the prayer warriors prayed for her. And all the other people, they repented. Those who didn't want to repent, they went away. And in that church, there came a mighty revival. And I came to tell you today, there is transformation for you. Because Jesus said, your cowardice, I turn into courage. Because he said, I will make you fishers of men. Number three, it is from weakness unto strength. You were weak before, but because Jesus said, I will. Weakness is gone away from your life. Now there is strength. Number four, there is from fear to boldness. From fear to boldness, you were fearful before. But Jesus came into your life. And the I will of Christ brings transformation to your life. I will. And your fear is gone and boldness has come. Number five, from unbelief to faith, unwavering faith. Unbelief to unwavering faith. You didn't believe before, but now your faith has been lifted up. The I will of Christ has brought a transformation in your life. And then number six, from pride to humility. Pride to humility. You know, Peter, he could boast a lot, he could brag a lot. But you know, the Lord worked on him and all the pride went away. And now he said, be ye humble, all of you. He became a preacher and a performer of humility. I come to number two. Number one, transformation. Number two, revelation. Number one is the wheel of transformation. Number two is the wars of revelation. The wars of revelation. You know what we're looking for? We're looking for those two words, I will. I will. In John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him. I will love him. I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. Now, when the Lord says, let's say Jesus Christ saying, I will manifest myself unto him, and I will love him. Whenever I read my Bible, I think. I don't think in words, I think in pictures. Maybe you don't know we think in pictures. For example, let me ask you. If I say a house, what comes to your mind is not H-O-U-S-E. That's the spelling of house. Anytime I mention house, you don't think the spelling. You think the picture. You just see the picture. If I just tell you now, a dog. You don't think D-O-G. You think a dog. You see a dog in your mind. Anytime I mention a dog. Anytime I say, look at the man. When I say man, you don't think M-A-N. You think man. You see the man in your mind's eye. Am I right? And anytime I read that, I will love him. Then the way I think of it is this. Here is um, Jesus on this side. And here are 10, 20, 30, 100 Pharisees and Sadducees on this side. You remember the Pharisees? I said you remember the Pharisees? Do you remember the Sadducees? They don't want to see. And they are on this side, 100. Now, 100 Sadducees and Pharisees, they hate me. Only Jesus on this other side, he loves me. And then I'm thinking now, which one bothers me? 100 Pharisees and Sadducees hating me. And then Jesus only, he is loving me. Which one is greater? One Jesus. Son of God, Redeemer, the conqueror of death and hell and evil and Satan. He says, I will love you. And then I have 100 Pharisees that cannot heal an ant, that cannot kill a goat, 
that cannot do anything and their hatred is empty hatred their their frown is empty frowning and their language has no power but jesus when he says lazarus rise up he rises up and, he, and then he's coming alive and these 100 pharisees they say i hate you i hate you i said who cares who cares that 100 pharisees hate me because there is jesus my redeemer my savior the conqueror of heaven and earth and the one that is uplifted and exalted above all people on earth he said i will love you i think i'm all right i said i think i'm all right it's like if you have a millionaire and this only one person millionaire he says i love you anything you need i will give you any need in your life come to me and then you have about 104 people they don't even have anything to sell in the market and if they go to the market nobody is buying anything from them and these 104 poor people that cannot do anything that cannot provide anything they cannot do anything to you either good or bad they say i hate you i hate you you say who cares for your hatred look at one millionaire saying i love you therefore i am not going to look at those 100 poor people i'm going to keep on looking onto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is now set on the right hand of my father in heaven and is caring for me and is praying for me jesus said i will love you are you happy that he loves you are you sad that anybody hates you you know i remember one story and it's the story of the children of israel they actually were going to the battlefield and when they got to the battlefield somebody wanted to kill david and then one of the men of david quickly came and said and then he cut off the hand of that individual and spared the life of david and then they told david something they said you know what david you will not go to battle with us anytime because if all of us died no problem israel will continue because you are worth more than ten thousand people in israel David only was more than 10,000 Israelites. And the son of David, his name is Jesus, is worth more than 10 million people. And if Jesus Christ, the rose of Sharon, and the one that is better than 10,000 10 million of people on earth, if he says, I will love you, that settles the question for me. I can go anywhere. I can be anywhere. I can be in the midst of any, any number of people because there is the I will, I will, I will of Christ. And he says, I will love you. I will manifest myself unto you. Manifestation, revelation. I will manifest myself unto you. And Jesus will never fail. Anytime you get into a tight corner, remember, I will. I will manifest myself unto you. Anytime you kneel down, you are praying, I will manifest myself unto you. Anytime you have difficulty, I will say, how will I get out of this? I will manifest myself unto you. Anytime that people are trying to maybe double cross you and take your right away from you, I will show up. I will manifest myself unto you. Because it said, I will. Then you can rest. Because there's no problem anymore. Number one is transformation. Number two is manifestation or revelation. Number three now is confession. Confession. And it is the wit and it is the word of confession. Remember, we're chasing the word, we're looking for the word. I will. This is in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, here is what it says: Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess before my father which is in heaven whosoever will confess me before me i will confess him before my father who is in heaven you know anytime we think about confession we think about confession in the sense that lord i am a sinner I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. I am a poor, miserable worm. And I'm not worthy to even start to stand in your presence. That's what we think about confession. That's only one part of confession. 
That's the initial confession. But now, the ongoing confession is confessing Christ. And Jesus said, when you stand in the public, like I'm standing in the public now, and then I'm confessing Christ, I am lifting up Christ, I am revealing Christ to you, I am manifesting Christ to you, and I'm speaking about Christ, confessing him that he is the Christ, he is the Savior, he is the Redeemer, he is the Healer, he is the Deliverer. And Jesus said, any time I confess Christ to the public, he will confess me before his heavenly Father. You know, I used to be very, very shy. So shy that I couldn't even speak. In fact, in the church in which I was, before I, you know, we started a deeper life. Actually, before I joined the scripture union, going about to a scripture union, I was in the apostolic faith. And my Sunday school teacher in the apostolic faith, I was a university student at Ibadan. And I will come to church every time. And all my days there, my Sunday school teacher, Brother Victor, he never, he never had my voice in the public. Because I was very, very shy, and I couldn't even testify. Other people will rise up, and they will say, praise the Lord, I came to know the Lord at this time. I had the same testimony, but I couldn't share it. And then eventually, I started going to the scripture union. And then eventually, we started deeper life. And Brother Victor, my Sunday school teacher, he had traveled to London. And then eventually one time he came back to Nigeria. And then they told him that, uh, do you remember one uh, William Kumui? Oh, he said, yes, he was uh, in my Sunday school class and I know him very well. I was, what was the story about him? You know, he started something they called Deeper Life. And now he's, you know, having crusade and having this and having that. And he said, no, it cannot be true. The William I know, he does not talk. The William I know, if you put him there for five hours, he will see, he can read, but he, can, he will not talk. And then eventually, I, I heard that he came to Nigeria, and I went to visit him. And then when I visited him, I was still myself, very quiet, and you know, just looking at him. I said, I just came to greet you, sir. And he said, did they tell me that, uh, you know, you are no more in the apostolic faith? I said, well, I still have the faith of the apostles. The apostolic faith. I still have that. But I'm not in the denomination they call the apostolic faith. Oh, he said, is that right? I said, yes. He said, what happened? I said, it's a call of God. See what is happening. Then he said, you know, when they told me that you are doing something they call deeper life, I said, no, it cannot be because I know you that you don't talk. Yes, I was not talking, but I put myself in the life of Jesus and Jesus said, I will. And it is that transformation that changed me from being a quiet person and now I can shout and now I can talk about Jesus and now I confess Jesus. And you know, Jesus said, when you confess him, he will confess you. When you are praying, Jesus will say, Heavenly Father, that's my representative there. That's the meaning. And Jesus said, I will confess you before the Father. And I've seen the Lord doing that. We were in uh, the Republic of Congo. That's the Democratic Republic of Congo. Many, many years ago. And uh, as we were having a crusade in the stadium. Somebody had HIV AIDS. And then the people there, what they did was to bring the fellow on the, near the platform. And then as you are all sitting down there, they brought that fellow in a stretcher. And then she was like very dry, like, uh, like a stick. And while I was preaching, you know, every time you look up, you'll see her there. And then, what are you going to think about? But when you remember, I am confessing Christ. And when I finish confessing Christ, then Christ will start confessing me before the Heavenly Father. And so when I saw that uh, man there, that woman there, it didn't bother me because I was confessing Christ. And when you confess Christ as Savior, as Healer, as Redeemer, as Deliverer, when it comes to time for you to pray, He will confess you before the Heavenly Father, and the Heavenly Father will confirm your word. And so eventually, I finished the message, and then I said, it's now time. I was going to pray. And whatever the challenge or any need, the Lord is going to touch you now. And then we prayed. Immediately we prayed. And the people said, Amen. This uh, woman there like a stick, you know, just rose up and began to walk. And the national television, thank you, God bless you, put your hands together. 
and the national, national television crew of uh, Zaire at that time uh, came over there and showed the picture and showed it to the whole nation. It was at that time the ambassador of Zaire at that time saw it on the television and then he came running for me and said, you are my man. Before that thing happened, he didn't know I was their man. But after the scene happened, when God begins to confess you before the angels in heaven, everybody will say, you are our man. You are our woman. And uh, I, I think it was just last month, I was uh, traveling and we met in France. And he was traveling somewhere, was also traveling somewhere. And then he saw me. He came to greet me. He said, are you Pastor Kumi? I said, yes, I am. He said, you don't recognize me. I was the ambassador in Zaire. When that thing took place, I said, yes, I remember now. That's because God is confessing you. God will confess you. Because he says, I will. Our brother here, Pastor Ezewa Jopo, is, uh, you know, a state overseer here. And we were in the, Cong in the Republic of Congo together. Uh, when we, I think, was that last year? Thank you very much. Because uh, Abia State is covering the Republic of Congo. There was the, the television woman, that is the head of the television crew. Her father was so sick in the hospital. And the father could not even get up. And the father could not talk. And this woman heard that I was coming into the country to have a crusade. And uh, so she made up her mind and she said, when the pastor comes from the airport, immediately I see the pastor like this, my father, who is bedridden in the hospital, will get well. And the people of Republic of Congo, they drew my picture, large, large picture, on the banner, and then they said, Welcome, Pastor Kumi, to the uh, Republic of Congo. And then, as we were coming like this from the uh, immigration, and then I came out, they stretched out the picture. And, and she knew that they will do that, so she stood near that picture so that if I looked at the picture, then I'll be looking at her as well. And then, as I looked at her like this, and our eyes met, the power of God struck the father in the hospital. And uh, so the father, who had been bedridden, and if he wanted to go to the toilet, they would take him, carry him to the toilet. Anything he wanted to do, they had to help him like that. He just got up. Not only that he got up, he began to realize he was a sinner. And nobody was there to plead to him. He knelt before by his bed and began to confess, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. I've been running after women. Oh Lord, forgive me. I want a change of life. I want Jesus to turn me around. And nobody was there to pray to him. And then he phoned the daughter. He said, my daughter, I don't know what is happening to me. I am well. My daughter, you will help me to apologize to your mother. I've, been, I've not been faithful to your mother. I've been going here and going there after women. But now I want a change in my life. Why? Because God, Jesus said, when you confess him, before men, he will confess you before the heavenly father. And nobody will be able to hurt you. And something new and something different will take place in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number one is the wheel of transformation. Number two is the word of revelation. Number three is the word of confession. Number four is the witness of confirmation. Number four, the witness of confirmation. See what Jesus said in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, I will, I will. And when Jesus says, I will, then that thing is going to be done. In John chapter 14, reading from verse 13. And whosoever, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That means, I will do that this Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's the witness of confirmation. The Lord is saying, I will. You see, when Jesus called those disciples, and he mentioned those two words, I will make you fishers of men then you need to understand what he had in mind he had in mind i will transform you he had in mind i will reveal manifest myself to you 
heard in mind, I will confess you because before now the angels didn't know you and my father didn't count on you. But now I'm going to be confessing you before my heavenly father. You will not just be like ordinary people, like the people you used to be. I will confess you. Not only that, I will do whatever you are asking. And it's a witness of confirmation. That's what the Bible records in uh, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. Confirming what? Confirming the word was signs following. And that means if you are just following the Lord, then the signs will be following you. It's like, look up here. Here is Christ in front of you. And you are now in the ministry because he has called you. He has cleansed you. He has commissioned you. Because the Lord called you and you responded. And he cleansed you and you are clean. And he has commissioned you. And you are following after the commission that he gave you. He's walking in front of you. And then you are walking, you are following Christ. Signs and wonders will be coming behind you. And the signs and the wonders will be following after you. You follow Christ and the signs and the wonders will follow you. That's why it says over here, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word that they preach with signs following and thank God the signs are still there. Yeah. I said the signs are still there. Yeah. And we don't have to make it so much, you know, so much effort. You know, something that the people have noticed is that I'm kind of a little bit uh, different. Uh, the reason I'm different is because of my understanding of the Bible, of Jesus saying, I will. And he said, you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I don't wait for any special time to say any special thing before those things happen. Well, uh, at the, I was traveling, and as I was traveling out of Nigeria, and uh, when you are going to a, a far place, you sometimes will get down from the aeroplane, and then you will walk and join another aeroplane to go to where you are going. And so we, were, we came down from the aeroplane that took us from Nigeria and took us to, I think, Paris also. And then we were to join another. Then there's something you call hand luggage. I had hand luggage. I was carrying my, you know, hand, hand luggage, where I put Bible and other things. And then one woman, she also was uh, traveling. And then all of a sudden she saw me. And she said, this is my chance. I've not been able to see this man in Nigeria. And I need a miracle. She needed a child because she had been married for many years. There was no child. And so she ran after me and said, hey, good morning, sir. Are you pastor? So and so I said, by the grace of God, I am. And uh, he said, I need appointment. I said, what kind of appointment? Because in Nigeria, I want you to give me a letter, a note now, and sign it. So that when I get back to Nigeria, I'll be able to show your ushers, and they will allow me to see you. Then I said, what do you want? She said, I've been married for... And that time we were walking, we didn't, you know, we didn't stand there and close our eyes and say, in Jesus' name, can you do that on the tarmac? The vehicle will run you down. And so we were just uh, walking, and she was walking by my side, and she said, I need a child because of this, and she was telling me, and we were walking. And then now I need appointment. I said, why do you need appointment? The appointment is here. <laughs> so she said, we can pray here. I said, yes. And uh, so I said, let's pray. And don't close your eyes, keep on walking. I just said, in Jesus' name, she needs a child. Give her the child. I said, in Jesus' name, amen. I said, bye-bye, I'll see you again. You have your miracle already. And, uh, you know, she must have looked at me as if, you know, this deeper life pastor, you know, instead of binding the devil and, you know, doing some real Jericho match. Uh, there's time for that. But this time now, just in Jesus' name, and it is done. And then I went my way, she went her way. The following year, she came to see me now in Lagos. And uh, she said, Pastor, do you remember me? I said, uh, who are you? Tell me about yourself. She said, I'm the one that saw you at the tarmac when you were at the airport. We are going from one airplane to the other. And I said, I needed a child. I said, yes, I remember now. She said, praise the Lord, this is a child. Because the Lord said... If you will confess him before men, he will confess your name and he will confirm your word. 
and I'm sending you out of this place this afternoon with the word of authority in your mouth, the word of power in your life, with the anointing of the Lord in your life. The Lord will go with you. When you open your mouth and you speak the word, it will be confirmed in Jesus' name. And miracles will become the normal thing in your life. We were in America some years ago. I went to Deeper Life. And uh, in Deeper Life, you know, we finished the meeting. And it wasn't a very big crowd like this. And so the custom there is that when you finish like that, you don't run up. They want to shake hands with you. I said, that's all right. And so after we finished the meeting, we, uh, you know, I stood somewhere there. And they were coming and they were shaking my hands. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Come next time. You know, something like that. And there was this person on the wheelchair. She was at the back like that. And as she was at the back in the wheelchair, looking at other people, going up, and, and she, he saw that I wasn't moving from where I was. I stayed there, and the people were coming, and they were shaking hands. God bless you. We'll see you next time again. It's been a nice meeting, and you know, that kind of pleasant, uh, pleasant talk. All of a sudden, she ju he just felt, I want to go and greet the pastor myself. And I'm not going to greet him in my wheelchair. And as the people were coming and coming, all of a sudden, she just got up. And when he got up, then he walked to me by himself. And he shook my hand and said, I will come next year. <laughs> miracle. I said, miracle. Because Jesus said, I will. In your life, the will of God will be done in Jesus' name. If you accept that will, when he said, I will confirm your word, you'll be different from today. You will not be the same anymore because number one, transformation. Number two, revelation. Number three, confession. Number four, confirmation. Number five, inspiration. Inspiration. The wisdom of inspiration. In Luke chapter 21. Remember, I will. In Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. We're looking at verse 14 and verse 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 14 and verse 15. Certainly, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what he shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. I will. He said, I will give you a mouth. And wisdom from today, the words of your mouth will carry power. Yeah. From today, authority is going with you in your mouth. Yeah. Because Jesus said, I will. I will give you a different kind of mouth. And different kind of authority. And he says, I will give you wisdom that the people of the world will not be able to resist or gainsay. Number six, impartation impartation that is the weapon of impartation matthew chapter 16 verse 19 matthew chapter 16 verse 19 and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven what do you use keys to do i said what do you use keys to do to open and to close and from this afternoon the doors are open before you because he gives you the key. The only thing is, use the key. How many of you have had the experience? You know, sometimes uh, you're coming out of the house and you put a bunch of keys, you sisters there, into your bag. And you forgot it was in the bag, a particular corner you put it and you zipped it up. And then you come back home, you want to open the door. And you open the bag like this and you didn't see it there. They say, what happened? Maybe I forgot it in the office. And then you went back to the office and you look for the key you couldn't find. And all the time, the bag is with you. You are carrying the keys about. And then you open everywhere and search everywhere. And lo and behold, you couldn't find the key. And you're carrying the keys about. And then you say, what am I going to do now? The doors are locked. And I am locked out. And what will I do? And then you're looking for a carpenter that will break the door. And you are, then you have not got a carpenter. Then you are depressed, you are dejected, you are discouraged. What am I going to do? And I need to prepare food for the children. I need to prepare for my husband. And I cannot find the key. 
and uh, all of a sudden maybe eventually your husband came back and your husband said what's the matter you said it's because i've lost the key i cannot find the key and eventually he took his own key and he opened the door and then you are relaxed and then you you entered in and even though you are relaxed you entered in your sister open and unhappy because you lost the key and after you have eaten everything is now over eventually you are looking for another thing and then you open that zip look at me look at the key that i was looking for the key was with me all the time and I was looking for a helper to come and open the door for me. The key is with you all the time. I said the key is with you all the time. And when we finish this conference, don't look for it anywhere. It's right there. I said it's right there. Take out the key. The key is in the name of Jesus. And you have that name in your mouth. You have that word in your mouth. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. That whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Because from this day, the I will of Christ is taking effect in your life. You will heal the sick. You will open blind eyes. You will deliver your prayers. Because I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The weapon of impartation. Number seven. The wonder of reproduction. The wonder of reproduction. The wonder of reproduction. This is what he said they will do in your life. We're looking at here from John. John chapter 12. John chapter, chapter 14, verse 12. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, He that believeth on me, Where are those people? Where are the believers? Where are the believers? You know, I'm going to change that question a little bit. When I say, Where are the believers? You know you are. Now I'm asking, where are the miracle workers? You see, anytime when you ask the question this way, immediately your mind, your heart will say, yes, I am here. If you change that question a little bit, you will think a little. And what are you thinking of? You are thinking of the past. I never did that. Because we changed the question a little, the miracle workers, and you are there. I said you are there. Where are the believers? Where are the miracle workers? Praise the Lord. He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Whosoever and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he ask anything, if he ask anything, if he ask anything in my name, I will do it. What are you asking this afternoon? What do you want to become this afternoon? What do you want to do that you have not done before this afternoon? Jesus said, I will. And I'm here to announce to you, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. No witch can stand before you. No sorcerer can stand before you. No pharaoh can stand before you. No mountain can stand before you. The Lord has put a yes into your life this afternoon. Go out in your freedom. Go out in your authority. Go out in your power. Because Jesus said, I will go out and carry out the will of God. Rise up and talk to the Lord. I will. I will, I will, and when God says I will, when Christ says I will, there is nothing that can negate that in your life. I will of transformation, I will of transformation, I will of revelation, he's revealing himself to you, I will. I will of confession. He will confess your name before the Heavenly Father. I will of confirmation. He will confirm your word. 
I will of inspiration. He will put his word in your mouth. I will of impartation. He gives you the key. The key is in your mouth. The key is in your hand. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. The key is there. And you close the door against the devil. Open the door. And close whatever door you want to shut up. And the wonder of reproduction. The wonder, the wonder, the wonder of reproduction. Let the ministry of Christ be reproduced in your life. Let the victory of Christ be reproduced in your life. Let the success of Christ be reproduced in your life. Reproduction. Reproduction. The wonder of reproduction. It's done. It's done. Because Jesus said, I will. No more weakness. You are strong. No more fear. You are bold. No more sickness. You are healed. No more affliction. You are delivered. No more failure. You are successful. I will. I will. I will. And the will of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the authority of the Lord is going with you. I will. Go out and succeed. Go out and be victorious. Go out and overcome every difficulty. Go out and represent Christ. Go out and lift up the name of Jesus. You will do it. You will do it. What the Lord has called you to do, you will do. What the Lord has called you to do, you will do. No power will be able to stand before you. No Red Sea or even Jordan will be able to stand before you. You climb every mountain, you will cross every sea. You will overcome every problem. The key is in your hand. Open every door. The key is in your hand. Open every door. And the Lord will confirm every word of your mouth. The Lord will confirm every word of your mouth. Stand in the authority that the Lord has given you. In the power of the Holy Ghost that the Lord has bestowed upon your life. You can do it. You will do it. Because Christ, the power of God in man, is living within you. I will. I will. I will. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. I will. I will.
real. And when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. You are receiving a new power, a new revelation, a new authority. You are receiving new spiritual energy because Jesus says, I will. There is a confirmation in your life, a confirmation in your life. There is a confirmation in your life. I will. I will. go out in a new confidence, a new faith in the Lord, that what the Lord has affirmed and confirmed in your life, nobody can negate it or reverse it. What the Lord has affirmed and confirmed in your life, nobody can negate it or reverse it, because God says, Jesus says, I will. It's as good as done. It's as good as confirmed. I will. I will. I will. And it's been done right now. I will. Give yourself to the Lord for a confirmation that what God said He will do, He is doing it right now. Because He says, I will believe it, accept it, respond to it in your life. I will. And it's been done right now. transformation revelation confession confirmation inspiration impartation and reproduction let the Lord confirm it in your life it's been done right now it's been done right now and this sign shall follow them that believe. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they cast out devils. They will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall take up serpents. And they will speak with new tongues of authority. New tongues of power. It's a new day with a new experience, a new life, a new ministry in your life. A new day, a new experience, a new ministry. 
a new authority, a new power. Believe the Lord. It says, I will, and it's not. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a victorious amen. Give me an amen of confirmation. You give me an ash shaking, Red Sea dividing, Jordan dividing, Jericho wall blowing, explosion. Amen. Your Jericho walls are falling. Your weakness has turned to strength. And the I will of God in your life is confirmed in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring every brother, every sister, every minister, man or woman, I bring everyone before you now. Oh Lord, I pray a new life will begin. A new ministry will begin. A new anointing will come. A new impartation will come. A new power will come. Oh Lord, I pray these will be people who are carrying the precious treasure coming from heaven. When they open their mouth and they represent you and they say something according to your word, according to your promise, you will confirm it in Jesus' name. Evil spirits will not be able to stand before you. Demons will not be able to stand before you. Mountains, Red Sea, Jordan will not be able to stand before you. Every place the Lord has ordained you will go, you will go there. Everything the Lord has ordained you will do, you will do it. The power of the Lord will go with you. The might of the Lord will go with you. The anointing of the Lord will go with you. You will not fail. You will not be defeated. Success will visit your life. Success will remain in your life. Success will be your experience in Jesus' name. As the Lord sent out Moses, he's sending you. As he sent Joshua, he's sending you. As he sent the apostles out, he's sending you. Go in the power of the Lord and go and succeed. And the will of God, the will of Christ will remain and abide with you till the end of your journey in Jesus' name. Lord, we receive it, we accept it. There's going to be a confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe. Tell me it is well with you, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord. Yes, it is well with me, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well. Yes, it is well with me, I believe. 